Hi, this is a microscope. It's a very, very cool microscope with cool LED lights and I love it. I'm going to explain to you why I believe this is such an important tool when you tell me your dog is shaking his head or scratching his ears. Today, we're going to discuss on my approach, my personal approach on how do I approach a dog when the owner is saying, it's shaking his head, it's scratching his ears. So, you have seen this before, maybe in some bad practices, it's called otoscope. So basically, it's a little metal tube with a magnifying glass. You can turn the light on as such, so you can see what's happening. You can put this inside the ear canal and take a look. So not only is it lit up because of the light, okay, as you can see, it's also magnified so you can see what's happening inside there. Um, personally, I don't use this. The reason behind that is because this is a metal tube. Two big reasons. One is that if the ear is sore and inflamed already, um, the last thing I want to do is make it worse by putting a metal tube into the ear canal which could be a bit sensitive, which could be a little bit painful. And secondly, if the dog actually resents it because it's very, very sore, it may shake his head. And if it's going to shake his head with a metal tube inside the ear, I believe that I could potentially cause a bit more damage. And, um, and certainly, um, this that, that's not my intention as well. Last but not least, actually, yeah, third reason, is that what am I going to see inside there? Am I going to see a little bit of redness? Am I going to see a lot of redness? Am I going to see muckiness? Am I going to see it's full of brown gunge? Uh, if I do see that, the redness can probably tell me it's inflamed, which I may know already by looking at the ear without putting this in, or, um, if the dog is shaking and scratching the ear, you can take a look at it anyway. Uh, and also, when I look at it, how do I tell whether it's an infection or not? More importantly, if it's an infection, what is it infected by? Is it a bacteria? What sort of bacteria? Is it a cocci, a round one, or is it a rod, uh, like pseudomonas, or is it metastasia, a yeast, or maybe even mites? So what I prefer instead is something a little bit more simpler. I prefer to use a little cotton bud, okay? So a little cotton bud I can stick into the ear, okay? Usually I put it into the, well, the, the ear that's not as painful for us, uh, because I'm going to wind the dog up and just just inside there, you know, I don't go all the way quite deep, it's just on the superficial surface, uh, just maybe in the sort of vertical canal, just inside there. And what I can do, I can smear it onto a slide, okay? And what I tend to do is that I, I smear it onto the slide. If I go to the right ear first, I'll write an R on the slide, R for right. And after the left ear, on the other side of the cotton bud, I'll smear it the other side. So that one's just a square, really, because one is right side and the other one, by default, must be the left side. So with this, this is what uh, I call cytology, okay, so ear cytology to be more exact. So once I've done that, I can stain it and I can look under a microscope, as you saw me do earlier. And with that, I can see exactly what sort of um, infectious agents, if any, is inside there. So if I see a lot of malassezia of different sizes, okay, it can tell me it's a yeast infection. If I see a lot of little cocci, which is a real round bacteria, you can tell me it's a, bacter uh, it's a bacterial infection, but it is by a cocci. The significance of that is that for yeast and cocci, cocci usually is like uh, this particular bacteria, Staphylococcus, um, uh, those are, tend to be quite easily treated with a lot of different sort of antibiotics. If I see rods, whole different story. Rods can be things like pseudomonas, which is uh, known to be quite resistant to a lot of antibiotics, um, or very, very occasionally, very, very occasionally, very, very rarely E. coli. Okay, so rods, the difference is that they are known compared to cocci and malassezia to be resistant to quite a lot of different antibiotics. So it is not potentially good enough to just give a antibiotic first line of choice if you find rods. So what I do is that once I find rods, I would actually advise the owner to say, look, it's rods. It well could be resistant to a lot of different sort of antibiotics. And uh, ideally, I need to know what antibiotics to give. So that is when I'll do a swap and send it off to the lab rather than use a first line antibiotics that may not work, waste more 
money for the customer, increased cost, and also doesn't really solve the problem. So that is why I do cytology. To find out whether I need to send something off to the lab, or to find out whether what I'm going to use is most likely going to clear the um, infection, if there is any infection. Another thing about cytology is that if I don't see anything in the site or on the slide at all, as in it's not even murky and it's not that there's no infectious agents inside there, then and the dog is really really shaking its head. Maybe at this point in time, I'll suspect a foreign body. Maybe a grass seed has gone inside there, and that is where I may use my scope. Okay, or I may advise the owner to say that look for me to fully examine the ear for a dog that is so sore in the ear, it keeps shaking, I wouldn't tolerate a scope down conscious. Then I may elect to sedate our little friend and take a look down there to make sure um, he hasn't got any grass seed or any sort of a foreign body lodged inside there. So, and uh, on just the last little point, if it's ear mites, you'll see it. It's very, very obvious. You see on the slide, you see it even before you put on the slide. So you, you, say you don't even need the microscope for that. Sometimes you can see them waving at you. So that is my approach on ear diseases. Why I'll go for a slide first rather than using a scope. That's all I have for you today. I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to seeing the next live event. This is Amity.